The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 53, NASDAQ off 6, S&P's off 2.5. Gold contract down two dollars and thirty cents, trading at fourteen seventy two an ounce. You got silver flat seventeen dollars eleven cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up forty three cents, fifty five dollars sixty four cents a barrel. Now that's going to get really interesting today, Tom. Uh, oil numbers because oil got smoked yesterday, folks. Oil was down a buck ninety, had eight hundred thousand contracts. Uh, we'll see We're almost a dollar, not to jump in, we're almost a dollar off the low, though. We had a 54 handle on that. We're up to 55 and change, so yeah. volatility for sure. And we get those numbers, like you said, coming inventory in a half hour from right now. Notes, notes and bonds, they just refuse to die, folks. You get the 10 year up eight ticks, trade 129.22, the 30 year up 27 at 160.06. King dollar, king dollar flat, 97.873. The euro is at 110. The yen is at out. 108.64 and the pound is at 129 to 1 US dollar. And let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks, TD Ameritrade, as we do each and every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, you want to understand the option market, option strategies, futures, outstanding program, defined risk. If you haven't test driven yet the Think of Swim platform, it's real easy to do. You're on our website right now, just hit that Think of Swim platform. Bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money. You can follow Kevin and his team each and every day as they move through Target and Lowe's. You oh better move quick because they're rocking, God. man. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You know, this week, which is a very light week for economic data, really nothing besides housing to really pay attention to, but... When I looked at the earnings for this week, I highlighted a bunch of all the important names, and they were all retail. Yes. 100% of them were, 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 were retail. And what, I've learned, what we're learning from this week is the story of retail for this quarter is winners and losers. Yep. I mean, that is what you're seeing right here. What Target is doing there versus, you know, some of these other names. And, and when they miss and when these – these aren't showing that they're keeping up with other – man, they are punishing these names. And, and guys, just so you know, the three names we're looking at for today's show, yes. L Brands, Gap, and Macy's, the, we should call this show Loserville oh. because these are three companies, if you look at their charts, that have all gotten hammered yeah. since the last quarter or two quarters. So – we're going to make decisions on how to trade these stocks that have gotten really beaten up that's, that's, over the last 60 to 90 days. That's, that's so cool. You know what's amazing, Kevin, is that, like, it's probably about two years ago now that on these updates, you know, you were bringing up the aspect that we thought that the separation was taking place. Definitely. I mean, time goes really quick, but that's, that's come into fruition now, that it really, you know, at, if we go back a couple of years, it almost was like all retail's going down. Well, right. you can almost see it as it was changing. And then now that's real. I mean, it really has changed dramatically, right. you know, that, right. that you have these winners that are extraordinary because they're left. And then just as you said, today's going to be a big show because the reality is that when you look at a Macy's, oh my God, I mean, when you think of Macy's, it's the parade, it's it's That's red, white, right. and blue. It's it's apple pie. I the mean, the question you have to everything. ask is: Are they going to be around? Right? Yeah, if they're going to be around, right. then they'll be okay. Totally. But are they? Where's their place in, in that sector? You yeah. Know, you rent those big spaces, man. Yeah, that's big money. That's you know. And and you know who seems to be winning through all this, right? Who seems to be coming out on top? Who seems to be losing? The the people, the companies that are coming out on top are the companies that embraced the change of e-commerce yes. and got on board right. and invested in their businesses and changed their businesses. I mean, some of the things that, you know, Brian Cornell, the CEO of Target talked about this morning, 
was amazing about online orders and how if you get a, 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 something sent to you via the store versus via their distribution center, the store is 40% cheaper than getting something from the distribution center. So just showing how efficient these places are becoming. And, you know, they talk about clicking and picking it up, yeah. shopping online and picking something up or yeah. – you know, shop, shopping online and going in the store or curbside, you know, all these things are changing these businesses. And Target has clearly, you know, been one of the people that were willing to make the big change, and you're starting to see it in their numbers. You know what's interesting, though? If you want to look and talk about size of companies, Target's market cap is $56.5 billion, a little more after today, obviously. Walmart's? Three hundred and forty one billion. Yeah. <laughs> so we, 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 we compare Target to uh to to Walmart all the time, yeah. right? As two big box retailers, but boy, <laughs> one is much bigger than the other. So I uh, you know, but but we knew this was gonna be interesting in covering these names. Sure. But the one the one constant theme is winners and losers. No, no doubt. And you know, that whole pickup deal, I think at the Stores is a big deal because, yep. you know, you, you jump online in the morning, you get what you get down, you're doing errands, you say, okay, man, I'll run by the store sure. at a certain point, get it. Yeah, you know. and you don't necessarily know everything you want at the click of a button. Sometimes there's yeah. a few things that were still, especially groceries, certain items, you want to check out a few clothing items or what it is, and then you pick out a few household yep. items that you need while you're there or something like that. Oh, yeah. yes. That I mean, and w w one great thing that I think Target now has in its favor that you can't ignore is momentum. Yes. In terms of, because here's what, there's rumors now going around because Nike left Amazon that Nike's going to partner with Target Ooh. and put Nike in Target stores. They've already got little mini Disney shops set up in the Target stores. They've got a little uh, partnership with Toys R Us for the Christmas holidays going, like whatever that, that spinoff is of Toys R Us. So they've got momentum now. They've got people seeking them out because that is that place to Put your product that's getting a lot of eyes on it yeah. and I, I just they, think because you know shoes people like to try on shoes oh yeah it's interesting you, know, you mention it. I was there with my girlfriend, yeah. she had a daughter. They both bought pairs of shoes, Kevin, last week. And I was saying, actually, man, they have a great shoe section, yes. just like a fundamental. Right. And it's amazing that you mention that because they really did. Great right. items, $35 maybe, you know, $40 discount. Yeah. Great shoes, man. In and terms if they of, get Nike, right. that's brand to brand. That's like right. intense, man. That's saying that you're to the top of the class. I mean, exactly. You know, wow. And for Nike to abandon Amazon, yep. because I think they abandoned Amazon because they've got their own. Sure. Direct right. to consumer business. Right. They don't need that. Yeah. But right. what they do need is a wider presence in stores other than the full price retailers right. like Dick's and things like that. You know, I think Target is a perfect choice. It's funny and like just, I said, Target has momentum. It's funny how fundamentally everything that I've just myself. So right. I've ordered shoes from Nike, delivered from Nike in right. the last like two months. I actually ordered a couple yep. of pairs, repair, uh, returned one because it didn't fit like I thought it was. Yeah. wasn't it? Ordered another one. And then I've been in Target looking at their shoes, man. So it's a real <laughs> deal. I'm not the only one. Exactly. Folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, we're going to be talking retail. We're going to be talking the losers. We'll see how these trades are setting up. You're going to love it, Kevin. You have a great one, a safe one, and we look forward to showing 45 minutes, Kevin. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow down 80, NASDAQ off 8, S&P's up 4.5. Notes and bonds continue higher, folks. We're coming right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 88. Nasdaq's off 10. S&P's are off 5.5. And, a half. and uh, you know, yesterday, folks, if you were listening to the program, we were talking about Warby Parker and we were talking about Harry's. And, you, and we all know this, but you got to see this. I mean, they're, they're pushing can Harry's there be ads. An, Look at the size there, of the ad. Can there be a banner ad bigger than that? It's just remarkable how, and just like you say, if you're on the Internet, you know that, you know, you got cookies, right? The cookies right. are in your browser. They're going to retarget you. So we checked out Harry's. Yeah. And uh, Bang. I'll give my former uh, Nolan Greeno classmate another plug for I Harry's know. razors because they're going to be Look following us around uh, that, for a while in perpetuity until we clear our cash or clear our cookies. I use or, Harry's. I think it's a great deal. Yeah. yeah I, they, I you mean, know, it's so simple. It's unbelievable. It is. And I think they ended up getting bought out by Gillette or one of those companies. Oh, yeah. I think Procter Gamble was in there. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, Procter right, Gamble. Right. Um, and they have. They bought a German blade factory or yeah. Germany or something like that to produce them. But you talk about a business with margins, oh, man, and razors. My God. Seriously. So let's take a look at some of the uh, higher volume. Well, here, let's go with the S&P first, because the S&P, once again, you know, it has, it was trying to make an all-time high again this morning. Um, you know, got got a good boost up, you know, from last night. You know, bottom line is that you, you're somewhere down with that. That's that's four in the morning. You're at uh, 3104. Yep. Uh, you know, and it, di it didn't make it. Now, it's cause it's, what's going to be so intriguing here, of course, is only 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> True. Um, you know, that being said, you get a flat market out here. If we take, uh, if we go to the Dow Industrials, let's see what the strength versus the weakness in, in the Dow Industrials. So what we have out in the, in the Dow Industrials right now, uh, putting negative points into it, Home Depot 17, nothing heavy, 3M 16. No. Goldman 16, positive Boeing 15, McDonald's 8, inside the NDX 100. What you have is that you have uh, Workday is up 2.9%. You get INCY, that's up uh, 1.5. Taken away from it is uh, American Airlines down 2.5. You get uh, an analog devices off uh, 2.4, Xilinx off 1.8, and Alta Salon down 1.7. So... I mean, when you really look at this market, <coughs> excuse me, folks, you still really have a flat market out here. <coughs> and that, folks, but the thing that's amazing about this market, it, it is, it is <coughs> excuse me, folks, there's no doubt um, when we start talking markets, 
This is with the impeachment hearing and with Sondland, if you, if you haven't seen this thing yet, I mean, the bottom line is that he basically is letting it out that, yeah, it's a quid pro quo. Uh, everything that the uh, whistleblower is saying, he's verified on a firsthand basis that he, he was under orders. So you can see this market just shakes everything off. Yeah. You know. And do I even still have it? Because, you know, we should talk about it at some point. And there we go. You know, Giuliani's quid pro quo ordered by Trump at his direction. Um, Giuliani demanded that Ukraine make a public statement announcing investigations into the 2016 election DNC server and Burisma. Sutherland, in the opening statement, was just, uh, it was. I was getting <laughs> updates everywhere, man. <laughs> Giuliani was expressing the desires of the president of the United States, and we knew that these investigations were important to the president. I know that the members of this committee have frequently framed these complicated issues in the form of a simple question. Was there a quid pro quo? As I testified previously, with regard to the court requested White House call and the White House meeting, the answer is yes. Um, and day. he is a hotel magnet right. that donated millions to the Trump campaign, right. not even um, so to call him a never Trump or whatever you want to do. That's as, oh, no, as, no, as, and, as big of a Trump proponent uh, as you can get. He's, a huge, he's that. a huge Republican because right. at, at, in the yeah. Wall Street Journal today. He's a huge donor, he, huge yeah, Trump he, fan. The last five Republican presidents, yeah. he's been trying to get in there. Right. Bottom line, though, uh, you know, we'll see market-wise. Unless the, Republicans in Congress matter, the, the market's not going to matter because nothing's going to matter unless yeah. our elected officials matter. So hopefully people wake up, man, That's because uh, I don't know how you defend that other than saying I don't care if that's the case, and that's pretty much what people are saying right now, right. which is a bummer. Right. So getting back to the market, man, oh, we got oil, oil coming up. Jumping over to the number of crude oil, it is 10.22 right now. We get the number at 10.30. Uh, jumping over to crude oil. So this Ooh, jumping around. number seven. Okay, this jumping we around a bit. We last week. So uh, survey number coming in at about an uh, increase. They're expecting a build no matter what. Okay. 1.5. Things have, I guess, inched up. Maybe the API was a big number last night. I'm not sure because yeah. the whisper is showing about 2.5. Uh, and let's just jump back to see how oil is trading, because as you said, pulled back pretty dramatically yesterday and getting quite a pop, though, this morning. We had a 54 handle on oil at 3 a.m. We almost made it all the way up to 56. We're sitting at 55.85 right now in the price of crude. So if you want to jump around, yes. see where we're at. Active Always contract. exciting when you get that number, when you've had the type of volatility we've had in crude, yeah, for sure. Oh, that's interesting. The active one's only... 81. We must have just rolled or something. Are we, I think the contract I was just looking at, which might be the active, might be January. I thought so. So we're looking at January over here with okay. 55.85, but go ahead. CO. It's December. Can you go active? Is that, is yes, that what you did? Yes, I did. So they are just rolling, yeah. The roll is happening. Okay, I'll still be able to get it. Yeah, we'll just pull it up and see. They're going to so, be, they're going to trade similarly, but there's your Yeah, down. I'm saying we're going lower. Hey, hey what, the reason being, too, folks, watch this. Uh, and thanks to Mr. Bill in the Den, API was six million last Ooh. night. So there's the increase for that whisper. Oh, okay. So even the, the yeah. So let's 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 put a number in there, man. And again, you know, this isn't guessing. It's it is guessing here. But when you're making the trades, right? If if you're making a volatility trade coming into this number, right? If you are bearish, you better be hoping that you get a surprise on your side. Um. To the tune of so let's let's go let's go we're gonna go 6.5 man oh cool we're going big shoot for the moon we're gonna you know? win it's a little bit of game theory right so you want to win you want to win right we went up seven ranks man that, we did if, well if, last if, week yeah. i don't know if I, I i saw the headlines we were like number six and number three i think because we jumped yeah. around to gas as well okay um now we'll, we'll we'll do a little game theory game theory right if you want to win all right you, you got to go big you know, if all that matters is, I want to win, man. I want to be number one, right? right? I don't want to be number three, number six. Even if, uh, you know, you, you almost, not that you have to choose a little bit of an outlier, right? And this applies to things like, uh, for instance, daily fantasy football, okay. right? You have these huge draft kicks, right? You have these huge games. You have huge tournaments of 10,000 players, 20,000 players, right? right? Uh, if you want to win that tournament, which is usually a top-heavy prize pool, you have to choose an outlier lineup. You know what I mean? You right. can't just choose the best value for your money. You can't choose the best educated guess right. to win because guess what? There's going to be like 15 people with identical yes. lineups. There's going to be 15 people with identical matches of between 1,500 and 2,500 here. Right. You know, if, if you want to have an easier avenue, you choose an outlier. Um, and in the long run, you'll win more often than the average person guessing because you've got to be so close to, to beat the average. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. 
the uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, the the Dow basically oh. gets some juice on the way down. And then nothing heavy, but 104 is uh, some juice, no doubt. Gold uh, bottom line is holding its own. The bond market, folks, is that uh, what ha what's happening out here today? We I, now yesterday was light volume. We're getting volume today, though, inside the bonds. Right now, yeah, you're already at a million contracts. Yesterday, we only did, I think, just over a million. So we're going to get a couple million, and that's what it takes to sustain higher price. That's, that's what it comes down to. Well, I guess we got over a million yesterday, but that's it. We have 1.2 million, but we're going to get, like, two point something today, and that's what you need in order to sustain higher price. The, we're at all time, just about at all time highs, and that 10-year is kicking at uh, 1.74. Not bad. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Uh, Tommy and I come back with the oil numbers. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, we yeah. shot for the moon and we didn't quite hit it. We saw the number come up there, 1.38, 1.38. Yeah, the interesting interesting thing is median estimate was actually 1.5. Okay. Whisper number inched up after an API showing yeah. a, a, a dramatic build, but I'll get down. So there's your headline number. Crude oil inventory is rising 1.38 million barrels, the EI says. Let's see how that hits the market as we jump back to the charts. 
And not too much of a response. It's pretty close to the median estimate number. We already traded up a dramatic amount of a dollar off the lows almost. Yeah. We're currently trading $55.88 right now. You know, whatever way you can look at this, technically, it looks like oil wants to go lower. Fundamentally, to me, it's like amazing that you got a ramp go coming out with their IPO. As we IPO. say that, it just jumped 20 cents. But yeah. go you got a ramp go <laughs> yes. coming out with their IPO. Yeah. But you know that you're, you're pushing it out. That's the most valuable company. It could be one of the most valuable companies in the world. Probably a little bit debated. No, it probably is. I joke. But only because of everything that's happened. They're worth 1.6, 1.7 oh, oh, yeah, trillion. That, 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 but just to be, I mean, Microsoft is at like 1.1, 1.2 right now. Yeah. And that is a legitimate 1.2. If you actually pushed out an Aramco IPO on the New York Stock Exchange, right. do you would, think it would come in at 1.2? No. If they're able to only push it out at 1.6? In a Saudi market where they're in a shakedown, where they're yeah, where they're, where they're having the the Ritz cap D's. Right. Uh, so just to keep in mind, I mean, right. obviously the Saudi oil state company, oh, yeah. massive wealth, but just remarkable how right. far they've fallen from. Because uh, and it doesn't matter what happens, folks. If you look at the XLE, the thing is amazing. You look at the XLE. The XLE is trading at two thousand six levels. What do it two thousand almost twenty? Yeah, that's saying quite a bit. It that's sure saying, is. If the market's looking into the future, <laughs> the market is saying, hey, there's going to be plenty of other alternatives uh, to using oil every day. That sure you is, know? man. That's what it comes down to. So I have to jump back, man. We are an investment site, but yeah. we're talking about impeachment hearings to the president. If you don't think that affects potentially the market, um, just uh, tantalizing stuff, man, in terms of Vice President Pence. So Sunderland told Vice President Pence to reiterate, that's called firsthand, okay? Him actually telling the vice president before his meeting with Zelensky on September 1st that he was concerned that military aid was now tied to the issue of investigations. And then to really bring it in, so you have the vice president, you have the chief of staff, Mulvaney, already being implicated. Sunderland's got text from WhatsApp being posted as we speak in the hearings. And even as late as September 24th, Pompeo was directing Kurt Volker to speak with Giuliani. That's the secretary of state directing the special envoy to speak with the president's personal lawyer. In a WhatsApp message, Kurt Volker told me in part, spoke with Rudy per guidance, from S. That's uh, Secretary Pompeo, Secretary of State. And if you want to know what the president thinks of the man testifying, yeah. here was President Trump's words on just October 8th. I would love to send Ambassador Sundland, a really good man, great American to testify about. Unfortunately, he would be testifying before a compromised kangaroo court where Republicans' rights have been taken away. The true facts were not allowed to the public. Well, I hope everyone's able to make their own judgments on what he is testifying to, and so we'll see. But it's pretty, pretty, pretty remarkable, man. And uh, it should affect things because it's the president of the United States um, being implicated in a quid pro quo, holding co them. congressional aid All with the Secretary of State, the Vice President, Secretary of Energy Perry, Chief of Staff Mulvaney, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Right, Secretary yeah. of State. Yeah. yeah, doesn't get much deeper, man. Pretty remarkable. Wow. Okay. Back to Marcus. We'll do it. Let's dig into the target. Well, it, it, no, but what you said, it's, it, it's important to understand that that's, you know, this is about the Constitution. This is about the United States. But yet the, the market just shakes it off. So, I mean, the really unfortunate thing is at the beginning of the Trump presidency, things used to matter because the market actually thought that things mattered. And this is actually a statement that's pretty worrisome, that the market actually has recognized that politicians might not care about anything that this president does. Because if you remember, when he fired... Uh, the director of the FBI, I think the markets dropped 4% yeah. overnight when that happened, right. okay? And and now we're having things come out that are amazingly implicating, much worse so, I would say, than the president maybe just uh, obstructing justice by firing the director of the FBI. And the market doesn't care because they know they have one of the parties in office completely behind them that will allow them to do anything. That's my take. You make your own opinion. But, man, I don't know how you get around what's coming out right now from one of the president's biggest supporters in the president's own words Great man, great American, he'll tell the truth. That's not going to be the words today. That's not. I yeah. guarantee you that. I guarantee right. that tweet is already deleted if it's not um, <laughs> yesterday. Wow. Yeah. So let's get into Target's actual earnings, man, because they crushed it out of the park. Same store sales, I believe it was a 4.5 number. It's amazing. Some of these big... Look at that. Look at that. Comp, third quarter comp sales, 4.5%, a full percentage point. Comp sales always blow my mind, right? Because you know. know these stores are growing. They're opening stores everywhere. They're growing internationally. They're growing across the country. But when you have a store like Target, that's you'd think that if you were shopping at Target today, you're shopping there in a year. If you weren't yep. shopping today, maybe you're not. But to actually grow 
on a yearly basis from where you were last Billions. year for the same exact store. Right. You know, the same exact store. That's taking market share from somebody, man. Yes. Because that's not the type of growth that's going on in the economy in terms of the same amount no. of people aren't spending 5% more at Target. Right. You are taking market share from somebody else. Maybe it's a little bit from Amazon. Maybe it's a little bit from Walmart. Maybe it's a little bit from Kohl's. Talking about stores oh, yeah. getting hit. Maybe it's a little bit from Macy's, right? As Kevin talks about winners and losers. Looking forward to fast market coming up next with the losers segment. Uh, L Brands, Macy's. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting, man. And Kevin and made mention, because we looked at it yesterday, right, the market cap. It was interesting he yes. brought it up. Market cap, Target, much smaller company than Walmart. But revenue, man, they, they got some revenue, man. They, they are, you know, you're talking about $75 billion in 2019. And to push it back to where, because Kevin made a great point, because they are smaller. But, man, they're, they're, they're coming for Walmart. They're coming for Amazon, because $75 billion in revenue, and that's going to correlate to a market cap of only 64 billion, okay? But you go over to Walmart, and Walmart's looking at a company that's 340 billion. They're taking in 540. Wow, it is bigger than I even thought. Walmart amazes me. Yeah. 540 billion dollars. When's, when's the first company gonna pull in? What's 128 billion in 90 days. And I think that's the number I had in my head, not the yearly. Uh, I want to see what, as I was going to say, when's the first company going to take in a trillion dollars in a year? Because we're going to be there, man. A trillion. We're at half a trillion right now. Right. So Amazon, $873 billion company. That's caught a bid today. That's a the PE, PE of almost 80, to right. put things in context. And they're only 279. Yeah, and that's the PE, as they should be, because look at this growth, man. 177, 230, 280, 330. Uh, They're growing by leaps and bounds. They miles. are, and that's why the P.E. will correlate to that. Look at the earnings growth. That's, so the earnings growth, folks, this is actually amazing. 2015 for the year, $1.25. They project in 2020 and 2020, $27.49. And I think that's a, a, the tail end. Remember, they're, they're building out AWS, right? Yeah. The market kept saying, hey, when are we going to, like, make some money with all this revenue you're taking in, man? Oh, here you and go. that's when the spigot, you know, really turned on and to put things... And look at, look at Target, man, as we speak, still rocking. It's up That's, almost 13% now. Uh, but Amazon, I just want to put it on a longer time frame, man. Let's just go back. Well, let's, let's do 20 years because we'll zoom it in. But you'll see the run. Yeah, you see it at $3. And there, yeah, I just really, when they turned on the spigot, you go from the beginning of 2015 at 345 and in the span of four years, you're at 2000 Amazing. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. We're going to have it. I'm Mr. Teddy Kegstad. We are going to be talking currencies. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 78. Nasdaq's flat. S&Ps are off two and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Uh, my God. Teddy Cakes. Uh, we got it. It's a beautiful thing. We got a lot going on in the market. Yeah. I know. Get it to As you. we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, you can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. That website is your key to online forex trading. Well, we Teddy got a lot going that. On. What's going on, brother? How you guys doing? A little mixed bag of goods here with the currency markets. I think there's a lot of people watching the TV right now and not looking there's at what something the going, are... What's going on? The yeah, there's, there's, there's slightly something going, something going on, on in the markets. Just seems to shake it off, man. I mean, it's a trip in itself. They do, they do. But it also seems like there's like there's just a little bit of a lack of direction, especially right now with the dollar. So it's just uh, the dollar index, I think, is looking pretty heavy. Uh, but it, as soon as it starts to kind of make a move, I mean, it's just been really knee-jerky the past few sessions. And I think we're starting to head into I mean, we have holiday markets coming up next week in the U.S. to begin with. Yeah. Um, and I think the, these hearings uh, are starting to really weigh on the dollar as far as, you know, whether you're a bull or a bear, there's too much indecision going on right now. So I think you kind of have to look at some of your lesser major crosses for some swings. You know, I think that the yen right now, you got to look for a breakout maybe to the upside. Yeah, that, that yen, man, that 109.29 or 109.30, man, is a dangerous spot for me. <laughs> and, or anyone trading gold in general, you know what I mean? You know, we, we get up. That's exactly where I'm looking at yeah. right now as far as an upside breakout right in that area. No, I'm with you, man, because, you know, the bottom line, folks, is that, you know, it's got up there a couple times. And, you know, it had every right to basically jump over it. Uh, you know, and that was like well, two weeks ago. We got to the 109.49. It just gave it up, man. So you're still yeah. dealing with this. Yeah, it's a 109.32, man. Right. We'll see what that baby. I, I think the dollar also has, as far as the Asian currencies, the yen is, is something that it just has a, has a good hold on right now. It's hard to really get that market to sell off, no matter what happens to the dollar index. Yes. You know, the, the pound seems to be catching a, a pretty good bid. I mean, it's been at this 129.17 for a couple of days, but it mm -hmm. seems to be pressure, you know, pressuring the top of that range, you mm -hmm. know, and if it can break, you know, top side, it, that, that thing could, well, what do you think it could do? Well, I think that the pound has a good shot at going up into the uh, lower 130 handle, uh, yeah. dollar 30 handle for sure. I think just technically it looks like it's going to go there. Now, they have some debates on Friday coming up, and I guess the, the, the recent one from what I've read um, and looked at is that this Corbin guy did pretty well for himself. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's gaining any type of real momentum. It's just that he seems to be able to handle himself well. So I think that they're looking to see what happens on Friday's debates. Uh, but still, I'm bullish the pound um, overall. Yeah. 
And the, and the euro just hasn't moved, right? I mean, it, it, the euro it just can't seem to gain any strength. I mean, it looks like it wants to pop, and I think I'm right now a little bullish right now. I think right now I'm long. So Good. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad you got. I mean, yeah, because that, if if we got movement in the euro, that's when the dollar would get croaked. I mean, that's that's the yes. reality, right? That you know, the right. dollar is sixty percent. So. Yeah. Right. Right. And it doesn't seem like the euro wants to do it. Like it gets a little spike, a nice little rally, and then it just doesn't want to go. Now, I, I like I said, I am bullish, but I don't think that there's really much to the upside. I think it's just going to be a crawling little creeper of a rally, you know? Yeah. So you get that. Well, you're probably looking at that 112, right? You're at 110 right now, the top of the range. Yeah. There, maybe. Yeah. Right. And I think it could take like a week and a half to get there, literally, and then that's probably where it'll run out of gas. Yeah. Hey, Teddy, what, what happens like? You know, as you just mentioned, we're coming up to Thanksgiving, then we're coming up to Christmas. Now, I, I can see uh, the Christmas, that would affect everything because we have Christmas. Uh, every different religion has different mm -hmm. times at that time. What happens at, at the Thanksgiving deal? Does the, does the dollar slow down and the other currencies, or is it just our dollar that slows down? Meaning, <coughs> in trading wise. Oh, in trading wise, yeah. um, in, in trading wise, I think you definitely what happens for the most part is you do start to get really thin markets because of all the people that take off. Yeah. So at this time, you have nothing but really machines running completely, okay. especially in the last two weeks. I got it. OK, and that's really you good know? to know. Right. Yeah. That's where you, that's where whether you're a bull or a bear, you can get caught on the wrong side pretty quickly. Right. Right. Well, and yeah. you know, what's kind of funny is like I remember the days on the trading floor like there was the people that had to show up for work during the holiday markets, you know, who worked for the firms and ran the desks and what yeah. have you, the skeleton crews. Um, but as far as the real market makers, whether they were really good traders or bad traders, you know, for the most part, they did not come in during the holidays and especially during those last two weeks. Right. Because they, they knew the market was thin. If the market, if something came in, it really pushed it in a vacuum move. And this is back then when you, it was a totally different kind of dichotomy, sure. you know. So, but I think that right now you only have machines running at, during this time because nobody, if, if you, if you're, once you're a veteran trader, after a few years, you realize that if you're there on Christmas Eve trying to make money, it's not that you're an Ebenezer Scrooge, you're a moron. Right. Yeah. Right. You like just about enjoying a few things. Yeah. Special yeah. trader should not be there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, no, for, for sure. And, and we all look forward to it too. I mean, that's the other side of it, right? right? It's like, it's yeah. like, okay, you know, Tommy and I talk about it. Where's I like there's one streak that we get days off of, of the year, and then all of a sudden we don't get a day off again for a long period of time. Well, I got since we're talking exactly. about it, I just happen to be looking. Yeah. I mean, this is the NYSE holidays, and the the front end of the year is more loaded than not. So you got yes. New Year's, but then you got Martin Luther King Day, January 21st, Washington's yeah. birthday, President's Day, February 18th. You got Good Friday, Memorial Day, and then you're you're basically refined to July 4th, yeah. Labor Day, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Christmas. So we're just coming up to it now, yeah, yeah which, is, right. which is pretty cool. And yeah. uh, Christmas and New Year's both falling, and that's why I was pulling this up in originally, the of the on week. a Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to have a Tuesday half day, I believe. And this is where I just looked up NYC holidays for anybody looking for this themselves. So we got, we're looking at 2019, and if you get down to the asterisks, right, we got two of them in terms of you're going to get a half day on Friday for the Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay, now that's when we'll be closed. But in terms of <laughs> Christmas... You're going to get the third, the 25th, and you're going to be closed on a half day on Tuesday, the 24th. Okay. But then I believe as well, when you back it up, that maybe uh, I was looking for New Year's Eve. No, no, you, no New Year's Eve, love. Yeah, maybe? they make us work then. No yeah. New Year's Eve, love. Right. No, they make us <laughs> That's work. Right. Pretty wild. There'll be there'll be some champagne popping in the the Wall Street offices on oh, New Year's yeah. Eve till 4 p.m. Oh yeah, no doubt. <laughs> There's nothing else to do with those days. <laughs> I agree. That's why I was actually surprised. Yeah. What about the Swiss franc, man? Where is that heading right now? Uh, the Swiss franc uh, right now, the U.S. dollar Swiss is railing right now, so the Swiss itself is under pressure. And I think that right now you have um, this little kind of boost in the dollar index. It's trying to fight for a little bit of a rally. And I think that's where you're going to see the most of the momentum to the upside is the Swiss. But then well, also once it turns, that's where you also see the biggest breaks. Like it's kind of crazy. Like the euro has been in an uptrend now for a few sessions. And even today it slammed lower and then came back up near its uh, where yes. it opened up. And this, the Swiss is the one that has the action. How is that possible? It doesn't make any sense. Okay. You know, that's, that's, so, uh, that's intriguing.
Now, there is a big number coming out on, uh, is it Thursday or Friday? Friday is GDP coming out. Okay. So that's a big number to watch. Unreal. Listen, folks, you can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, you have a great week, a safe week, and, of course, we look forward to speaking to you uh, next Wednesday. Yeah, it's going to be right before sure. Thanksgiving. That's right. We'll still be talking. I like it, man. Thanks, okay, Teddy. man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, the good news is that uh, in Hong Kong, bottom line looks like uh, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with all the folks that got arrested. De-escalation of yeah. things for the time being. Yeah. Um, but you had, and jumping into the story that we just want to finish on, because this driving a lot of the, maybe the negative action this morning in the markets, talking about the U.S. Senate passing a resolution, I believe it was unanimously. It doesn't Yesterday, happen yeah. often. Right. Um, and that had to do with... Uh, with just going to scroll down Support. to get through it. Yeah, so here we go. So here we go. Now you have President Trump. Is he going to sign this, right? A major reason why he wants to deal now is so that China can buy large amounts of agricultural products. His position is even trickier because Congress would easily be able to override any veto of what he just passed. So is he going to side with 
The Senate, and it's really where you got China really upset, did, don't say I didn't warn you, says a statement issued by the Foreign Ministry's office in Hong Kong using a Chinese phrase that prior to this year was used only in a rare case like before 1962 war with India. Um, and this has to do with uh, support for the pro-democracy protesters, Thank right? you, yeah. 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 And um, so, of course, China's saying stay out of our business. Hong Kong says, well, not supposed to really be their business just yet, but of course it is their business, oh, yeah. they like to say. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how President Trump navigates these waters of a unanimous Senate approval resolution, siding with the Hong Kong protesters, veto proof. So, you know, are you going to go against a unanimous resolution for, you know, and, and, you know, money matters, right? The economy matters, but freedoms matter too, man. Oh. And it's a bummer that. You know, I feel like some of that stuff's taking a back seat just because we want a trade deal with China that we're going to allow Chinese to squash freedoms of citizens all across the world, including the biggest country in the world, China. Not as no doubt. We'll see how. Stay right there, folks. We got uh, Kevin Hicks, uh, team of TD Ameritrade, coming up next. And I'm Mr. Bowser Chapman, Steve Rhodes. Stay right. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bowser. Thanks, man. Bam! Look at him, folks.